My life as a scientist kind of started when I was a, an undergraduate at, at, at uh, University of uh, Texas, where I um, was hired to clean up uh, labs and, and hallways and test tubes and that kind of stuff. I was I was like a cabin boy, you know. They would they would look down on me and expect me to do everything for them. And but later on, I, uh, I you know I wasn't a fool. I was just poor. So I worked my way up and I got into graduate school and then I actually ran the lab. I, I oversaw uh, Japanese uh, people, German scientists, Egyptian scientists. So it was like a multi-United Nations, but I was the person that they would come to. So, so that's what kind of even got me more involved in, 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 in science and and, and more than anything else, kind of the natural, the natural medicines, which, you know, growing up as a young kid in, in South Texas with 60-something cousins, many of us got uh, college degrees and some of us got PhDs and masters, which is unbelievable when you think about it, growing up in the poorest count, close to the poorest county in the United States uh, per capita. So um, that's kind of, kind of got me motivated. I, uh, then I went from I went from being uh, a very poor kid in South Texas to a migrant worker. I went to pick strawberries and cucumbers in Michigan and etc. As a matter of fact, I made the point that I would never, never again uh, work with plants, collect plants. I, I hated that work, but you know what? That's what I do. But I get paid a lot better now than I did at that time. So, so. From you know migrant worker to janitor to uh, to uh, a research scientist, and now I'm an endowed professor at at Cornell University, involved now in making that connection of natural medicines with diseases that are very prevalent in our community, the Chicano Mexicano community. I am extremely concerned with with diabetes because it it's sort of an insidious disease that has led to the death of most of my uncles. Most of my uncles died before the age of 50. They died of heart attacks from diabetes complications. My father had his legs amputated, he died. And I myself really understood, now understand the, the, the complications of diabetes because I had open heart uh, surgery. I was cracked open by a medical doctor who uh, went in there they stopped my heart i mean as far as i know they might have stopped my brain who knows but um i um i had four bypasses and it, but it was i think it was during that that uh, operation you know where they uh, injected me with morphine uh, a series of drugs uh, that i think i, I had a, a kind of like a rebirth if you like a rebirth in understanding that Understanding science is now very important for maintaining my, you know, my health. I have to uh, to pay attention now more than ever. Uh, but that operation definitely made me a scientist. At that time, I began to understand. I got to know the drugs that I'm taking and etc. And I and I say that because our community, the Chicano community, suffers from from uh, diabetes. It's a it's a disease. That right now we know that in Mexico, Mexicans in Mexico have the highest rate of diabetes per population. In other words, Mexico is number one in the world. But what is even worse than that? The U.S., California, Me uh, Texas, Arizona, uh, uh, New Mexico border. That's even worse. So we got a major problem, and my. My kind of thinking is how, do, how does one get to the community using the arts, using literature and science to make them understand the importance of, of the science.